I did 10 years in prison, bro. Mandatory every day of it. I actually learned about Jesus Christ from, like, criminals, from, from the darkest people that the society would call the darkest people. Right, right, right. And they, like, told me, like, bro, if you want to find peace, if you want to actually get out here and turn your life around, bro, then this is what you got. This is, it starts within. You got to yeah. start right here. You got to go find that spirit. You got to make that connection with God. What are the chances that you just walked into somebody on the boardwalk who's telling you the same thing today? It's God. It's God, bro. I went to California, known to many as America's modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, to preach the gospel and had a powerful encounter with two guys on the San Diego boardwalk. As I was in Mission Beach, San Diego, God had highlighted these two guys to me, and I knew he was trying to reach them. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn on my post notifications. Also, make sure to watch the full video to the end. I'm here now with, introduce yourself. Aaron. Aaron. I'm school, bro. School? Hey, these guys stopped me when I was here on the boardwalk, just cruising. We're out here filming some content. So I wanted to ask you guys, man, what do y'all think the purpose of life is? Probably like gaining knowledge and probably like, uh, like sharing memories with people. Sharing memories? What about you? I feel like the meaning of life is, to, first of all, to find your purpose, mm -hmm. acquire as much knowledge as possible, mm -hmm. and inspire as many people as you can. What do y'all think happens like when we pass away? Obviously, you get something to heaven. Heaven? Yeah. Okay. You believe in heaven as well? Yeah. Okay, what about you? I believe in heaven, but not in the aspect of like the Christianity side. Mm -hmm. I believe that when we pass away from here, that your soul or your energetic being will actually ascend to a different plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what plane specifically do you think? It depends on your karma from here on earth. Okay, so you so you believe in like uh, Hinduism a little bit or like karma and stuff? Yeah, I just feel like whatever you put out, you're gonna get back in. Mm -hmm. And then when you pass, depending on how you lived, mm -hmm. depends on where you go. Like that energy. Like, kind of like, like what you... Heaven and hell, but like, it's just like heaven and hell, mm -hmm. but it's also on good and bad. Like, yeah. It's like a balance. So kind of like you reap what you sow, kind of, right? Yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. The reason why I ask is because we're out here today and we do like spiritual content as well. And we just try to ask people like thought-provoking questions, you know? And uh, for me, you know, I actually grew up Hindu. I used to practice like the laws of karma, chakra balancing, all this, you know, kind of spiritual stuff, right? Up until I was about 17, 18 years old. And then I kind of just became a little bit more of an atheist, right? I didn't really believe in spirituality or a higher power at all, right? But before I get into that, how do we get to heaven in your mind? Like, what's your opinion on that? That's a hard question. I'd say by doing right. Doing right? Yeah. Okay. And so you believe in, uh, I guess you said heaven too, but not in the Christianity aspect. What is your belief of like heaven exactly? My belief as far as heaven is a place of pure peace. Mm -hmm. A place where everything would be in order. Yeah. Without as much negative as well. Because if you look at it as far as in the Christianity, God's like, hey, if you do this, I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. But if you turn around and change your ways and acknowledge me as the most high, mm -hmm. then I, will, I can forgive you and then we can keep it going. And I kind of feel like that on the, the back end as far as heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, bro. Kind of just, kind of lost myself just now. Yeah. You got, so you, I guess you kind of disagree with the aspect of like of punishment, for example, right? Yes, sir. So the thing with uh, punishment, I'm, I'm going to get into this story that I'm going to share with y'all. Then I'm going to get back to that topic. When I was around 18 years old, I was kind of an atheist, I guess you could say, right? I was living in Hollywood before I came back down here um, to San Diego. You know, I was doing a lot of soul searching. I was trying to learn about, you know, wh what's the purpose of life? What's the truth of why we're here? And when I was in L.A., I actually got exposed to satanic rituals. When I had seen people, like, doing demonic stuff and worshiping the devil, it kind of challenged my atheistic worldview because I actually wasn't even raised Christian at all, right? So I was actually raised Hindu. You know, when I had seen that, I was kind of shook. I'm like, what the heck, bro? Like, people are really out here, like, in the occult doing witchcraft, worshiping Satan? That completely boggle my mind because I didn't think any of that stuff was real, right? I think this was around like I was about 22 years old and I just started to do deep research. I started researching different religions. I started researching about God specifically and I started to realize like there was so much proof of specifically Jesus. Like I would research Islam, Hinduism and like yeah every religious book says good things but when I was researching Jesus specifically like I noticed there was a stark contrast where he was actually claiming to be God in human form, right? And that was very intriguing to me. So I started doing my research about archaeological evidence. They even found proof of Noah's Ark like a couple weeks ago, you know? I was like, huh, maybe this Christianity stuff is real, but it's still kind of weird to me because I was never taught about this. I never really knew why people believed in Jesus or anything like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pray to Jesus 
and just see what happens, right? I'm gonna just pray to God. I was like, how do I get right with God? Cause I had no preacher coming up to me. Nobody was evangelizing to me or anything. So I'm like, bruh, how do I get right with God? I know that I'm separated from God. Like I just knew deep down. I watched a video one day about repenting from sin, right? Cause sin separates us from God, right? That's the Christian belief. And I was like, man, you know what? Screw my sin, bruh. I don't care about it. I'm gonna repent right now. I'm gonna ask for forgiveness, you know? So I got on my knees one day when I was living in Hollywood a couple of years ago and I had cried out to Jesus for the first time in my life. And I said, Jesus, I believe you are God and I pray that you forgive me of my sins. And I wasn't expecting anything to happen, right? But bro, immediately I had the craziest encounter with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Bro, it was so crazy. I started crying, bothered my eyes out and like, snot was coming out of my nose I had to get up off my knees to go blow my nose because there was so much mucus coming down it but it wasn't because I was sad I actually encountered the love of God like the Spirit of God and I I felt what it was like to be in the presence of my Heavenly Father for the first time you know and I was weeping like a baby bro it was crazy and from that day my life was never the same bro like I was starting to get convicted about certain things that I didn't even know was in the Bible. I used to smoke weed every morning. I used to roll up backwards every morning, Russian creams. I used to drink regularly. I used to have problems with lust. I tried to go fornicate with different women. Bruh, off rip, as soon as I had repented and received the Holy Spirit, I started getting convicted of all of these things without knowing that the Bible said that you shouldn't do it. The reason why that is is because in the Bible, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, that wrote the Bible is the same Holy Spirit that lives in those that have a relationship with God. So I was getting convicted out of nowhere, but I figured out why. It's because God's Spirit lives in me. And, and I want to tell you, bro, like God is real. And the whole punishment aspect that you were talking about, I want to ask you a question, right? If you're disobeying, if you're being disobedient to a family member, to like a mom or a dad, are they going to correct you? Yeah. They are, right? And so it's the same thing with our Heavenly Father. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, I chastise those that I love. He corrects those that he loves. And God actually never created hell for humankind. He created it for the devil and his fallen angels, right? But the reality is, is that we're separated from God because of Adam and Eve's fall, because of their sin. They chose to disobey God and eat of the forbidden fruit. Adam and Eve chose to basically betray God and embrace the things of the devil, right? And this is what brought the curse of sin unto humanity. And so this was never God's original plan. Hell, sickness, suffering, depression, all the things that we feel here, this was never part of the plan. God actually created the Garden of Eden so we could have paradise with him and fellowship with him. So all the, all the whack stuff that we go through in this world was never the plan, but guess what? Humanity screwed it up. Humanity is the reason for why we deal with this. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came down not only to set us free from the bondage of this world, but give us an eternal life, which was God's original plan in the first place, so that we could be in paradise with him. But if you want to go to God's kingdom, there are rules that you got to follow. There are certain things that he commands us to do. It's not like God wants to be controlling. That's not what it's about. The kingdom of heaven is 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 pure it's holy right the kingdom of heaven does not deal with the sin that we deal here on this earth so the reality is we can't expect to go to the kingdom of god if we're not obeying god if you go to somebody's house and you knock on the door and you say hey let me in bro what, what do you think they're gonna say i don't know no right they're gonna ask you who you are yeah. not the who are you why you want to come to my house right because they don't know you, right? They don't have a relationship with you. And so that's the same thing with heaven. In order to go to heaven, in order to be accepted in the gates, we gotta have a relationship with God. How do we do that? It was through Jesus, right? Because Jesus is what breaks us out of this matrix where our sin separates us from God. You know what I'm saying? Because Jesus lived that perfect life. So this is the whole essence of what Jesus Christ did, right? God came down as a human being lived a perfect, sinless life, took on the death and punishment that we deserve for our sin, our rebellion towards God, so that if we believe in Jesus Christ, God sees us through the lens of his perfect son, who was fully God and fully man, and that actually makes us perfect and righteous before God. It's not from our own works. We can't work our way to get to heaven, right? You could do all these good things. You could found charities, you could found orphanages, hospitals, whatever, but the reality is that doesn't get rid of our sin. Because y'all have heard of the saying, nobody's perfect, right? Yeah. The reason why is because we all deal with sin. None of us are perfect. We've all told lies. We've all stolen. We've all looked at a woman with lust, which is considered adultery by Jesus' standards. We've, by nature, already broken all the Ten Commandments. If we broke even one commandment, that would be guilty of punishment. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to clear all the debt. And it's actually very simple. Like, if you just believe in Jesus Christ, that he actually set you free from your sins and you repent and confess your sins to God, you could be washed clean, bro. And then you can actually experience the peace of God. I used to deal with so much depression, bro, suicidal thoughts. Like, bro, I was, I was a wreck. A lot of people, they don't really know why 
people are Jesus freaks. And I used to, you know, kind of make fun of Christians too. Like, bro, why are they so passionate about this guy? Like, who even is this Jesus dude? But now I know, bro, because it's that relationship with God that he's given me. And it can only be found through Jesus. I wanted to ask if y'all need a prayer for anything. Yeah, you can pray for me. Father God, I thank you right now for my brother Shelly. Lord, I pray that seed will fall on good soil, and I pray, Lord, that you would encounter him in a mighty way. Are you dealing with anything, bro, in your life right now that you need prayer for specifically, like depression or anything like that? Yeah, man. Right. Well, what, what's really been going on? Because I'm discerning that right now. You're dealing with some stuff. Yeah, man. I got anxiety, depression. Anxiety? Yeah, man. Anxiety, and depression, real. Okay. Like my testimony, bro. Like I'm familiar with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because. I encountered him in one of the worst places that you can imagine. Yeah. Like I did 10 years in prison, bro. Wow. Mandatory every day of it. Wow. And I actually learned about Jesus Christ from like criminals, from, from the darkest people that the society would call the darkest people. Right, right, right. And they like told me like, bro, if you want to, if you want to find peace if you want to actually get out here and turn your life around bro then this is what you got this is it starts within you got to yeah. start right here you got to go find that spirit you got to make that connection with god right right now that's facts bro and what are the chances that you just walked into somebody on the boardwalk who's telling you the same thing today it's god it's god bro he's trying to reach you father god i just pray right now for shelly and any spirit of depression any spirit of anxiety i command that to loose and come off of him right now in the mighty name of jesus christ father god i pray you would give him that perfect peace right now that comes from the holy spirit and i come against the spirit of anxiety and depression lord i pray that you would renew his mind with your word god i pray you would renew him with your peace in jesus christ's mighty name Amen. God is after both of y'all, man, because God created us for a relationship with him. Heaven and hell are real spiritual dimensions. So I want to pray for both of y'all right now, if that's cool. Yeah. Father God, I just thank you right now for my brothers over here. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would encounter them in a mighty way. I pray, Lord, that today the, the seed that I sown will fall on good soil. And I pray, Lord, you would water it. I pray, Jesus, you would give them encounters and dreams and visions. And I pray, God, that you would lead them to repentance and lead them to your kingdom. And I thank you, Father, for just allowing me to talk about your son. And I pray that their hearts would be able to change even right now. And you would give them a heart of flesh, Lord, that would be receptive to the things of you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys, Thank man. You, and you, and, and, and keep keep seeking, man. Keep seeking God, bro, because what God it? is real. What was the YouTube channel again? Uh, Big, Nick. Big Nick. Yeah, B-I-G-N-I-K. Aaron. Aaron, nice yeah. to meet y'all. This was a sign from God for, for both of you guys, Thank man. You, I don't even live here. I live in Texas. Yeah. I'm over here today. I just felt like God wanted me to... Yeah. Right, what are the chances, bro? I and I wasn't even supposed to be here. I'm here visiting my fam, and I'm all the way 30 minutes away in Mission Beach. We even know we're coming down today. We, just, we decided we got up today because we're roommates. We decided to get up, and I was like, let's go. He asked me earlier, you want to get out? I was like, let's go. To buy an appointment. Yeah, we just did right. it by ear. It's yep. so crazy because a lot of the sweatshirts that you were just speaking on, we were just Literally talking about talking yesterday, about, yeah. bro. Really? Yeah. Yes. Wow. The Lord highlighted both of y'all in the spirit to me and I stopped everything that I'm doing. We were gonna go walk down there and, and start evangelizing to people, and I felt the Spirit of God turn me around and have you guys come over here. So I'm telling you, it's God, bro. Seek Him, He's after both of y'all. This encounter was so powerful that even weeks after I interviewed them, one of the guys in the video looked up my channel and left a comment about it. People are hungry for truth. And as Christians, we have the answer which is found in Jesus. Depriving the world of Jesus' love is selfish. So let's die to selfishness and bring others the gospel, which is the cure to this broken world.